Hi, everyone. Don't adjust your sets. It's Freaky Friday right here on Liquid Lunch. And uh, I am Fernando Uribe filling in for the great John Tobacco, uh, who could not be here today. But certainly there's a lot to cover here on a Liquid Lunch so much in the news cycle. And again, I appreciate you tuning in here on this Friday. And of course, you know what? Uh, check us out on Facebook Live, of course. And always follow us on social media. We appreciate your loyal uh, support each and every day right here on Liquid Lunch. Uh, folks, you know, a lot to cover today, and without question, the biggest news of the day encompasses the President of the United States uh, testing positive for COVID overnight. Uh, we know that since Tuesday night's debate, the President and his challenger, Joe Biden, have been in the news cycle. And quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it has been just almost hysterical from a lot on the left. And of course, many on the right have supported the President's performance. But without a doubt, last night's news, I think, puts a wrench coming up for the upcoming debate between the president and his Democratic challenger, but more so now, something that really concerns me, though, ladies and gentlemen, is the idea of the vitriol coming from the left right now overnight. And I'm, listen, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a bit of a night owl. And, and you know, as I'm doing work uh, for my other programs and, and I'm watching Twitter and I'm watching the news, I see the president testing positive. And you're seeing so many in liberal Hollywood and so many on the left, you know, commentators, activists sort of, you know, taking pleasure in the fact that the president tested positive or dropping memes online or, you know, sending very malicious tweets. I mean, I don't know about you folks, but I mean, that's what really turns a lot of people off about politics, you know, and it's the idea about how polarized it's been. And I understand all that. And I get that some people on the left don't like the president. I mean, you're entitled to like whoever you want, but many on the right do. And listen, I don't wish harm on anyone. I might ridicule some politicians and some activists on not just this program when I appear normally on Monday Mondays, but on my own program, Real Talk with Fernandi Uribe via Eyes and NJ. But I would never, ever wish COVID on Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or even Nancy Pelosi or anyone in the Democratic Party or any leftists that are on our news feeds. But it's somehow it seems like this is acceptable. And listen, I'm not trying to sound sanctimonious, but my, but my God, you know, it's it's just like, give me a break. Like, why are so many people taking pleasure in the president, you know, testing positive for COVID? OK, he, he wasn't wearing a mask. Fine. He's he's ridiculed Joe Biden for wearing a mask. OK, folks, this is stuff that happens when you work in an environment like the White House and you have so many people coming and going. You know what? It's probably inevitable where Hope Hicks and again, my thoughts and prayers go out to her of that she has a speedy recovery also during this pandemic. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, when I hear people on the left just celebrating today, tweets, Instagram stories, memes, you know, you name it. I mean, folks, that's just unacceptable. And I get it. Listen, I love dark humor as much as anybody else. And John Tobacco, I'm sure, is the same way. And everyone else on Liquid Lunch. But you don't do that to the President of the United States. And I think many today are sort of looking at procedurally but what this means. Obviously, the next debate is up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen between the President and Joe Biden. You know, how much contact he had with the former Vice President debate that night. You know, we don't know that. Um, again, as it pertains to other members of the White House staff, even Vice President Pence, who is preparing for this week's debate against Kamala Harris, his Democratic uh, challenger as, you know, the vice presidential nominee. And guess what? You know what? We don't know what's going to happen. But now we're seeing people saying, well, you know, if the president becomes incapacitated and certainly if Mike Pence becomes incapacitated, well, then Nancy Pelosi constitutionally would succeed and become the acting president. And I know for many people like myself, that scares the hell out of me, but I don't want to think about this in joking terms. So I don't know about you, but again, we'll talk about this a lot today. With and we're jam packed with so many outstanding guests here on a Freaky Friday. But you know what, folks, take a moment, pray for the president, whether you like him or, or not. You don't wish this on anybody, and we've lost so many people up to COVID. We've lost family and friends, and you know what? It's just something that, that isn't funny. So you know what? We're going to talk with a lot of our guests today. And coming up right now after the break, we'll be talking to Zen Sams and Sid Rosenberg about this very same topic and much, much more as we return with more on Freaky Friday right here on Liquid Lunch TV.